Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome to our new playthrough which is Arkham Horror, the living card game and Night of the Zealot. Looking forward to this one. Why? Well, not only is it brand new, it is also the first living card game that I have ever played. Normally, I think they're a bit of a con, so, um, you know, they force you to buy zillions and zillions of, of cards, and this is just living card games, collectible card games, or even worse. But um, this one seems a little bit different, although you can buy more than a single core set. I've only got a single core set, but you know, you can have a limit of two cards that are exactly the same and that sort of cuts down on the number of core sets that you need for, especially for solo play. But it is designed to be played solo with just a single core set and that's what I am going to do. Hopefully it won't penalise me too much as I'm a bit of a newbie. That said, because I'm such a total newbie with these sort of games, Please bear with me if some of the concepts seem unfamiliar to me while you're there watching it going, Oh, that's so easy, dude. Yes, probably is. And uh, hopefully I will catch up pretty quickly. But I am looking forward to it. It does look pretty cool. Uh, it's not a totally blind playthrough. I have seen a couple of videos on YouTube. I've obviously read the rules as well. And um, but to be honest, they don't stick that well. I need to. It's a sort of repetition thing with me. So hopefully I won't get too much wrong. But as ever, I am counting on you guys out there to point out where I do drop a major bollock. And uh, I'll do my best as ever to fix anything later on. Okay, so that said, let's have a look at the game. We'll quickly go through the components and the cards. I'll do the components first because there's not very many of them. First of all, let's go through the main sort of randomizer in the game, which is the chaos bag. Now, the chaos bag is filled with chaos tokens. And here's a selection here. There are 16 of them in the bag when I put these in. There are also... You get a lot more than 16, as you can see there's quite a few here and depending on the difficulty that you want to go at then you will put a selection of these tokens into the bag. I'm going for easy standard as you might imagine because it's my first game and what you get is you'll get tokens like these with numbers on so you go from plus one which is the highest one you have to out of the number tokens, minus four is the lowest on easy and standard. They do go up to minus eight if you fancy it on nightmare mode. So for those of you out there who want a bit more of a challenge, there is the wherewithal to do that with what is supplied. There are also tokens that just have designs on them. So here we have sort of a broken rune tablet. And here we have a skull tablet. And here we have a sort of cowled cultist. Now, what this allows the designers to do is obviously to assign different modifiers to these guys, depending on the scenario. And the modifiers can sort of move around as well. Um, on this skull one, for example, in the scenario we're going to play, if you get ghouls at your location, depending on how many ghouls are there, it affects the modifier on this particular token. So it allows them to get a bit more variation into the gameplay, which is always good. Let's fling those in there. And this one, this one's a particularly nasty one with the tentacles. It's colored red, it is an auto fail. So out of the 16 tokens in there, there is one auto fail. And there's also a good one though. You do get the good old Elder Sign token. Depending on which investigator you're playing, these have again, these will have a different modifier. So again, it allows for more com uh, it allows for more customization. So pretty cool. So put that in. So they're all in there. Give them a shake. Don't have to use a bag, use a cup, anything you want, a bowl absolutely anything stick them in your pocket if you want just so long as it's opaque and you can't see what you are pulling out that's groovy additional components 
we have these which are like little brown crates those are resources now you can pay for cards and card effects with these and you also use them for stuff like ammunition so if you have a gun asset then and that has four ammunition just put four of these tokens on it and you know how much ammo you have left so those are resource tokens we also have clue tokens so green ones like this they are a clue token and on the flip side they are red because they double up as doom tokens as well so that is like sort of a timing mechanism in the game and the clues are for again it's another sort of currency but generally it's the currency that helps you move the game along so you can move to the next phase of the game once you get enough clues so there we go that's them and we've all seen these before health and sanity tokens so pretty much get these in any arkham files game so we've got a few of those as well to track how injured and how bonkers our investigators are getting so that is the components that come with the game what doesn't come with the game is the bag or the container that you put the chaos tokens in and some of the stuff i've got down here i've got some color coded monster stands for our investigators three here and three here all therefore is to track the actions each investigator normally gets three actions per turn you can get more than that you could get less than that if something particularly nasty happens but because you're getting three actions per turn it's just my way of tracking them it helps my aged brain additionally i've also got some colored plastic tokens here they are just for putting on locations i'll show you the location cards in a bit but there are certain situations whereby you can do one thing and one thing only at a location during a game or a turn and this will help me track that so i'll put a red token down if wendy has done something at st mary's hospital that she can't do again that way later on i know she's already done it those don't come with the game the monster stands don't come with the game as i say just for my personal memory purposes right those are all the tokens so let's get on to the main part of the game which is the cards so the cards i'll go through the scenario cards first and we'll do the player cards last and then finally we will do our investigators for the game so the scenario cards well first of all we've got something that's called the agenda deck this is bad these are bad people you do not want the agenda to move on as far as possible you want to keep the agenda where it is why because things get bad run out of time on the front you flip it over get whatever's on the back which is normally not very good and then you move on to the next agenda the game the monsters wants you to cycle through these because it means they are winning so this is the bad news deck so we've got three here for this particular scenario and that is the gathering so three for the gathering which is part of night of the zealot so we do not want these to move on that's the agenda deck we also have the act deck now the act deck is good we want to cycle through the act deck as quickly as possible because that means we're succeeding at the scenario so once we fulfill the criteria for this we flip it over read what's on the other side of it and then we move on to the next act and so on complete all three acts in this gathering scenario we're laughing and we can move on to the next chapter so first chapter is the gathering three scenarios in it we want to get through by turning these over we want to turn as few of the agenda ones over as possible and we are laughing chocolate biscuits so i'll go through both of those and read the flavor text when we actually start the game but that's what they are in addition to them we have the reference card so this is the reference card 
for The Gathering, which is the first part of Night of the Zealot. We're doing Easy Standard. And here we are with those Chaos Tokens and what they mean. Remember the Skull? That is minus X. X is the number of ghoul enemies at your location. You have two at your location, it equals minus two. So you don't want ghoul enemies at your location when you pull that baby out of the chaos bag. The cowled figure, the cultist, is minus one. If we fail the test, when we pull that minus one, then we will take a horror. And the broken tablet, that's minus two. And if there is a ghoul enemy at the location, we will take a damage as well. So here you can see an example of how they can vary, how they can make the modifiers variable with these particular chaos tokens. So that is on easy and standard, which is what we're playing. Next up, we have location cards. And we've got our first location. I'll go through this in more detail once we actually start, but here's the study. It's got two sides. Now, the first side will have a little keyhole symbol here. That means you haven't got to the location yet. Once you get to the location, you'll flip it over and you'll have more information on the other side. There'll be a bit of flavor text on the front. There's various icons like this one, for example, this, and there are icons down here. This is just a single room in this scenario. But there will be other scenarios where you have more than one room or one location. And what these symbols here, they will show which ones connect to which. But you'll see that as we actually go through the game. As I say, when you start, to make it easier, you're just trying. It's just this single room, your study, that we will be in. But just gives you a idea of what the location cards look like. So there we go. There is the study. Other than that, we have enemy cards. So those will be found in here, which is the encounter deck. So let's find one. Do, 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 do. Here we are, we've got a ghoul minion. So this is an enemy. Tell you what all the iconography means when we get into the game, let's just save time. Well, as you can see, it's an enemy. You have a bit of flavor text on it. And these are the values that you're up against. And you will probably be pulling out of the chaos bag to try and defeat or evade. So that is an enemy. There are other cards in here. For example, treachery cards make up the encounter deck as well. And they all have symbols. You see here, they've all got symbols. And each scenario will actually tell you which cards out of the encounter deck to put in the encounter deck using these symbols. It'll also give you the numbers as well. You normally have a little number right down here in the corner. So you can build your encounter deck. So you have treachery, you have enemy cards, and that makes up your deck. So each scenario will tell you how to make up your encounter deck. Put that there. And that is it for the scenario cards. Then we move on to the player cards. And the player cards are split into six, seven different sort of types of card. Now, you have cards where, based on character class. So you have guardians, you have seekers, you have mystics, you have rogues, and you have survivors. And they are colour-coded. So survivors are red, rogues are green, mystics are blue, well, sort of purpley. And you have guardians that are blue and seekers that are yellow. Now, when you pick an investigator, investigator will be able to use two of those classes. It'll have its main class and it will have a secondary class. And it can only draw cards out of those two classes. But you will see that when we get a bit further along and I show you the investigators that we have picked. Out of those different types of class cards, they're further split. You have, for example, here we have a rogue card that's called Opportunist. And this is a skill. 
So skill type of card. It's also got an icon here. This is a wild icon, which is the question mark. You can apply that to any either intellect, willpower, that sort of stuff. It's completely wild. You'll have a keyword and you'll also get text that tells you what the card actually does and what it will do for you and your investigator. So that's an example of a skill. You also get things called events. So here is an event card, which is called emergency cash. Now this one, as you can tell, doesn't have it's sort of neutral in color that's because this card can be used by any type of investigator no matter what the class is there's about i think it's six cards six or eight cards that any investigator can use in their deck this is one of them it's an asset and it's emergency cash again a keyword tells you what happens when you play the card and it's also got a cost i should have said that on well the skill didn't have a cost, but if it's got a number up here, that is a cost, and that is how many resources you've got to spend in order to play the card. Um, oh, what the skill card does have that I didn't mention is, you see this little horseshoe shape? Now, that's completely black at the moment, but if you get any white pips in there, that is how many experience it costs to actually use the card. When you start the game, anything that's got white pips in that little horseshoe, you cannot use because you do not have the experience to use it. That's that. And finally, we have got an asset here, which is, again, this is another sort of neutral card that anybody can have. The knife asset costs one to play. And as you can see, it's got a little combat icon, as you'd expect. Keyword, item, weapon, melee. And you've got things like this, this icon, which means it costs an action to use. So it's an action to fight. Yeah, it also costs you an action if you want to discard the knife. And another icon we've got in the corner, got a hand icon. This is a single hand. Yeah, so if you have two knives, you could equip one in both hands. But if you have... <laughs> Two knives and a magnifying glass, which also has a hand symbol. You can't hold all three. You are not a juggler. So that is what that means. Right, so there is an example of the different types of card you have. Additionally to that, you also have something called weaknesses. Now this is a basic weakness. There are several cards. They're all different. And you'll shuffle these up like we will do later on and we will assign each one of our investigators one of these basic weaknesses. They will also have a weakness that they bring with them. Each investigator has a weakness that is absolutely assigned to them. That will go in their deck and they also have a card where they have a specific item that is theirs and theirs alone. We'll go through that when we go through each investigator. Excellent. As mentioned, each investigator can pick from two classes. They get the main class and their subclass. So what I'll do next is we'll go through each investigator that we are going to play this game with, and I will mention the decks that they are able to draw from and what cards I have selected. And here we are with the player cards. Now you've probably seen already who our investigator is going to be because we've already got their little cards out. So some mini cards here. One has got Roland on and the other has got Wendy on. So those are our investigators, Roland Banks and Wendy Adams. Our lead investigator is going to be Roland Banks. So let's have a look at him. Here is his investigator card. So he is a guardian, Roland Banks, the Fed, little picture of him. And these are his statistics. He's got three willpower, three intellect, four combat, and two agility. Keywords are agency and detective. As a reaction, that's what this little circular arrow means. After you defeat an enemy, discover one clue at your location. Limit once per round. So if the location has a clue in it, and he manages to defeat an enemy, then he can take that clue that way. He doesn't have to investigate for it. 
he essentially gets it by killing the monster. Here is the Elder Sign effect. Remember the Elder Sign token that is in the Chaos Bag? So if he draws that, he gets plus one for each clue on the location. So that's excellent. If there are no clues, he gets a zero, which is pretty good anyway. As you've seen, there's a lot of nasty stuff in there. A zero is actually pretty good. He's got some flavor text here. So everything by the book, every I dotted, every T crossed, it had worked until now. He's got nine health, so that's really good, and five sanity, which is pretty bad, to be honest. So we'll have to hope he doesn't go nuts. So that is the front of his card. On the back of his card, again, we've got his deck size, which is 30. Deck building options, I mentioned this briefly. Guardian cards, so anything that's got this star on of level 0 to 5. And he can also use Seeker cards, which are the globe symbol, level 0 to 2. So only 0 to 2 for the Seeker. He is he's mainly a Guardian. He can also use the neutral cards, like the Knife, at 0 to 5. His deck building requirements, which do not count towards the deck size. So this is in addition to this 30. His 38 special, we'll see that in a minute. Cover up, which is a weakness. And one random basic weakness that we'll pull shortly. And here is his story. Roland had always taken comfort in procedure and rules. As an agent in the Bureau, he was relieved to have guidelines to follow in any given situation. But lately, his federal agent's handbook had been entirely unhelpful given the cases he'd been assigned. Try as he might, Roland could find no mention of what to do when confronted with strange creatures, gates through time and space, or magic spells. If he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, he would never have believed it, and there's no way his superiors would understand. Roland knew he would have to handle this one himself. So that is Roland Banks funky so we'll put him there he starts as all the investigators do with five resources i'm playing two investigators solo you can play one and we'll see during gameplay how that's taken into account in the rules but we're going to be playing two solo let's have a look at his special item which is his 38 special so it costs three to play so if he gets it into his hand, in order to play it, in order to pull it out of its holster, in effect, he needs to play, pay three resources. It's an asset. If he wants to discard it to um, achieve a test or something, then he can get either a combat for it, an agility for it, or a wild for it. That's what this means. That is a wild symbol. So he can put that against intellect for example if he wanted generally i want to keep hold of this but all these cards have these icons on and you can use them to boost your tests so if you pull say a minus two chaos token out and you'd played this for one combat instead of being minus two it would be minus one plus any other modifier that you had so there you go uh, keywords as normal item weapon firearm for Roland only uses four ammo so we would put four of those resource tokens on it and those would be its ammo once you'd used all those then all it's good for is using for these tokens pretty much unless you can get extra ammo as an action you can spend one ammo and fight you get plus one combat for this attack if there are more there are one or more clues on your location you get plus three combat instead so huge this attack deals plus one damage so you'll get the dam the original damage plus one so two damage so if a monster's got two health he can kill it with this so pretty good one shot and that's his special these are the uh, backs for the player cards so that's his 38 special that will go in his deck and he as mentioned he gets a weakness and this is the weakness that comes with roland it's a treachery and cover up 
weakness task revelation put cover up into play in your threat area with three clues on it so as soon as it enters your hand it goes into play in the threat area the threat area is right in front of your investigator and it basically says this is a card that you need to deal with we'll put three clues on it as a reaction when you would discover one or more clues at your location remember for Roland that includes him for example killing something while there's a clue there discard that many clues from cover up instead so instead of picking up a location clue he would take a clue off this card if he gets rid of all three clues off this card he can discard it excellent why because if the game ends and this is forced so it means there's nothing you can do about it when the game ends if there are any clues on cover up you suffer one mental trauma so instead of being five sanity he would go down to four you do not want that to happen sanity is bad enough as it is so where it says game it means like scenario so we're playing the gathering we do not want to go into the second scenario which is the midnight masks without solving this because if, if that happens we're in big trouble and we lose that sanity so that's his weakness now he also needs another weakness so this is the deck of the other weaknesses we'll give it a quick shuffle and then we'll pick what we're having now there are two ways of playing these you can either keep them secret just put them in your deck and then it comes as a nice surprise or you can actually see what you are picking and that's what we're going to do because it allows you to mitigate the effects and thematically the way i look at it is you know what your weaknesses are you might not like to admit them even to yourself but you know what your weaknesses are my weakness is buying board games as my missus keeps telling me like this one so we all know what our weaknesses are even if we don't like to admit what they are so i don't mind finding out what it is and his weakness is a stubborn detective probably one of his colleagues basic weakness humanoid detective prey bearer only so, so obviously prey means he's um when it comes out it's actually going to look for roland as you might expect because it's his weakness it's a hunter that means it'll follow him about so while stubborn detective is at your location treat your investigator as if his or her printed text box were blank except for traits nasty despite everything he won't believe you had nothing to do with those murders so it's an enemy so this is a very bad one yep so don't like it and that's what he's got so you've pretty much got to defeat it as well you've either got to evade him or defeat him to discard him so pretty nasty well you've got to defeat him to discard him evading him he'll just follow you around because he's a hunter but that is the stubborn detective i think that's how that works so that is his three cards that have got to go into his deck now i mentioned there is not a great deal of deck building if you've only got one core set but there is a bit because there are all the guardian cards for roland he has all the guardian cards he can pick from he's also got some of those neutral asset cards he can pick from plus skills now he's took all his guardian cards so and guardian cards that don't have pips here i don't know if you can see it too well there's a sort of like black horseshoe under here because he's just started he cannot have anything that's got a white pip in there because you need to spend experience to get those and he hasn't got any yet so these are the sort of things that he's got in his guardian deck he's got dynamite blast physical training and he was able to pick some from seeker as well so here's deduction and old book of law and stuff like that as you can see he's got all these plus he's put some skills in because he's got to make it up to 30 now he's took overpower and unexpected courage now things like this are different from what they tell you to use in the book because i'm a naughty boy the ones that they tell you to take in the book are normally the sort of stuff that 
Roland isn't too good at, like, um, like they'll, they'll give him more agility. He's only got an agility of two, so they'll try and cover that off. And the reason they try and cover that off is because they're building that deck because you're going to be the only investigator. But he's actually with Wendy Adams. So what I'm doing is Wendy Adams is going to cover off those sort of weaknesses. And similarly, Roland's going to cover off her weaknesses. So in getting things like overpower and unexpected courage and things like that, I'm actually playing to his strengths. I'm giving him cards that will make him better at what he's already good at. And simulate for Wendy. The way that I'm mitigating what their weaknesses are, like the agility for Roland, is I'm hoping Wendy's going to back him up. So that's the way I'm playing it. Exactly the same with Wendy. Now, cards from the Seeker are the Guardian deck that I'm not using. I'm using all the Guardian ones, but there are a couple of Seeker ones that I'm not using. Just to explain why I'm not using them. One is the Research Librarian. It's all about tomes and stuff. Now, the specific Seeker Investigator is Daisy Walker. Now, this would be great for her. Similarly, Medical Text is brilliant for Daisy Walker. This allows you to sort of heal. Why am I not having a heal for Roland? Wouldn't that be really useful? Well, yes, it would, but only if you succeed. Because if you don't succeed, you make it worse, yeah? And if you're actually already injured, you don't want somebody like Roland botching it up because he's <laughs> because he's not as good at healing as Daisy Walker is, for example. So I've took these two out. One, because that's just not much use to Roland. And this one, because I'm trying to save him from himself. A little medical knowledge for Roland could be a bad thing. So we're just going to stop him from like causing more mayhem with these two because he's took those two cards out and he's not using them he actually took an extra couple of skills so he's took an extra couple of skills to mitigate the fact that he hasn't got those two cards right so that's it for roland so with these three cards and the ones that I'd already pulled, he should have 33. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Fantastic. So I'll give those a shuffle before we actually start playing. And I'll put that deck over here. Okay, who's next? So what's all this? Oh yes, those are the weaknesses. Next, we have Wendy Adams. So let's have a read of Wendy Adams. She is the urchin. She is a survivor, which is what this icon means. She has four willpower, three intellect, only one combat. So that is where Roland is going to help her out. But she has got four agility. Remember, Roland's only got two agility. And this is the synergy that we're having. Whereby they are going to help each other out. So, she's a drifter. That's her keyword. As a reaction, when you reveal a chaos token, choose and discard one card from your hand. Cancel that chaos token and return it to the bag. Reveal a new chaos token. Limit once per test per ability. So if she gets a Chaos token she doesn't like, she can discard a card from her hand and pick another one. So that's pretty cool. Her Elder Sign effect. So if she pulls the Elder Sign token, it's plus naught. If Wendy's amulet is in play, that's her special item. You'll see that in a minute. You automatically succeed instead. So that's pretty good. Now, she's a little bit better in that she's 7 health and 7 sanity. So she's a bit more balanced than Roland is. Let's flip her over. Her deck size is also 30. Her deck building options, survivor cards, which is her own deck, level 0 to 5. And rogue cards, which are the green ones, at level 0 to 2. Neutral cards, like Roland, 0 to 5. Deck building requirements. These do not count towards the deck size. 
Uh, Wendy's Amulet, we'll go through that shortly. Abandoned and Alone, which is her specific weakness, and a random basic weakness that we will pull later. And her story is... Mama used to let Wendy play with her necklace when she was small. Mama would tell her stories. Wendy would spin the necklace and watch it as it glittered. Then word came that her father had been lost at sea, and Mama started acting strange, drawing unusual symbols in chalk all over the house. They took Mama to the asylum, and Wendy went to the orphanage. Before they took her away, Mama gave her the necklace to protect her. Wendy stayed in the orphanage for several years before running away, deciding she could take better care of herself on her own. So that is Wendy Adams. Put that there. Let's have a look at her amulet. So here we go, an asset. Cost two to put in play. It's got two wild symbols. Item, relic, Wendy Adams deck only. You may play the topmost event in your discard pile as if it were in your hand. So we'll have to keep a track of the events. Remember, we've got events, skills, assets. As if, We've got to keep track of what the top one is. Forced. After you play an event, place it on the bottom of your deck instead of in your discard pile. Yeah. So if she uses this to pull an event out of the discard pile then she's got to put it on the bottom of the deck just means that she can't do the same event again and again and again so pretty cool right and this oh yes is an, another one of those little icons this is like um, an accessory icon you can only have one of them so just like you can only have you know two items with a hand symbol then you can only have one of these sort of accessory symbols. So that's what they mean. Right, so that's her amulet. <clears throat> her weakness, specific to her, is abandoned and alone, which is treachery, a weakness, and madness. Revelation. Take two direct horror and remove all cards in your discard pile from the game. I don't need them. I don't need anyone. So this is a nasty one to get in order to get rid of it. If you've got a big hand, yeah, all that hand. Um, sorry, if you've got a bit, you know, a lot of cards in your discard pile, they're just going, yeah. Removed from the game. You're not going to recycle through them or anything. All the events, you know, that you could use your amulet for that were in the discard pile, they go. It's grim. Plus the fact you set two horror, which is also grim. So. Best way to deal with this card is have nothing in your discard pile. So if you get it right at the beginning, that's pretty good because you just take the two horror. Best of all, don't get it at all. <laughs> have it right on the bottom of your deck and don't get and win the game before you actually get to it. But again, pretty nasty. They're all pretty nasty, these. And not only that, she needs another one. So let's do this. And let's see what her basic weakness is. Paranoia, nasty. So treachery, basic weakness, another madness, revelation, discard all of your resources. So like those five resources we've got there, we'd have to get rid of them all. Yeah, and you're back to zero again. What was that noise? So as soon as this comes out, any resources you've got, away they go. Doesn't stop you getting more afterwards, but get rid of all your resources, then you discard this card. So... Not very nice. Let's get rid of these weaknesses. Put them over there. Okay. Right, so we've got all these. And here is her deck. Now, she has got all of her own cards, all of the survivor cards. And she has also got all of the rogue cards, like this switchblade. I haven't taken any out. So she's got a full complement of both her main cards and the sort of this subset of rogue cards that she can have. She's also picked a few skills to make it up to 30 in this deck. And she's got the she's got a knife, she's got a flashlight, she's got stuff like that that any investigator can use. Again, very similar to Roland. There are some like overpowers and stuff that I've given to Roland, which actually I should be giving to Wendy, according to the rules. Well, not the rules, the guidelines 
the suggest giving them to Wendy. The reason for that is they're trying to cover off the fact she's not very good at fighting. But Roland's going to cover off the fact she's not very good at fighting, just like Wendy's going to cover off the fact that Roland isn't very good at evasion or stuff like that. So I've played to her strength and given her things like... Well, let's find one which is which is really good for things like perception and oh there's one in here somewhere come on where's the skill there it is manual dexterity manual dexterity this makes her even more agile yeah so normally it says don't bother giving this to wendy because she's pretty good at it anyway but we're playing to her strengths so she has got this yeah so that is wendy again i won't go through the whole deck and describe every card we can do that while we're playing oh it would help if i put the others in um i'll shuffle these in properly before we actually start the game properly but that's her deck again she's got 33 put those over there so there we go that is the decks and everything as i mentioned we've got the two little sort of standee cards that have stuck on a on a stand normally they'd lie flat but anybody who's watched my playthroughs i do make it i do do some changes for the fact that it is actually on video rather than just stood here doing it on my own with nobody watching like you guys so i do stand them up so you can see them better also if you have a look at the table and the way i've got it set up it's just for the video normally you'd have it completely flat but I've got to, I'll be doing things like if we get things in our threat area, I will stand them up like that. These, this will be our in play area for both Wendy and Roland and anything in our hand will be down here. And then we'll play it up to there and we will meet the threats as they come down. Again, it's just easier locations will all go on this flat bit up here and we'll know where everybody is because we can see where the cards are with their pictures on so groovy right i think that is it yes that is it for the introduction and setup if i've made a balls up or said something that's completely wrong hopefully one of you chaps will come along or chapesses will come along and put me right we will start the actual gameplay next episode and I'll go through some additional stuff then like the turn sort of sequence and the actions that you can do and stuff like that. It's just easier to see as we actually play along I think rather than going through every single card. So that's pretty much it for the introduction and setup. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all the views, the subscriptions and all the likes. That's fantastic. And thank you for all the help and support. As I've just mentioned, you noticed anything wrong, please give me a shout and I will try and put it right before we start the actual game next turn. Also, thanks go out to everybody who's gone over to Board Game Links to upvote the site. Thank you very much as ever. And I look forward to seeing you for episode one of Arkham Horror, the living card game and Night of the Zealot. Until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.